What's up, everybody? This is Red Tech Shoe, and I am bringing you episode 16 of my Dante's Inferno LP. We're gonna finally finish off Greed here once and for all with a nice little uh, boss fight against a certain someone. So, down here we've got uh, a little lever we're gonna pull, and in the last video, uh, you, I mentioned that we saw an Asterian beast uh, pushing a giant block through, uh, a, you know, the gold, uh, Golden River. Well, here it is. We're going to commandeer that Asterian Beast, but however, we can't quite jump into the river in order to fight him. So we'll come up right here, and now we'll raise up a platform, jump up on here, and now the boss fight. Well, not the boss fight, just the showdown between us and the Beast can begin. <clears throat> so, we're going to end right here, and you need to finish this fight before the platform gets too low. If the platform gets too low... The gold will, you know, the platform will lower back into the molten gold and Dante will be killed. So you need to move quickly. You need to defeat this guy with a sense of urgency. So we just, you know, uh, if you have redemption, go ahead and use it. I don't need redemption or my magic. I'm going to cut it close, but I am going to do it. I'm going to beat this guy. The trick is I just got to keep up the aggression. I got to keep attacking him. Use whatever magic you want if you want to. So right there I got caught because I was I thought he was about to get staggered, but he didn't. So let, I just got to keep up the pressure, keep attacking him. And we're actually going to use this Asterion Beast right here for a majority of this video. It literally. We write, we take control of this Asterion Beast and we take control of him throughout uh, pretty much the rest of the this video. Until we get to the final boss fight of this, uh, of this uh, upgrade. So, let's go over here, kick the Beast Tamer off of his pedestal. And the good thing is, I the thing I like about the Asterian Beast uh, fighting is their the combos are really the same. Uh, the uh, It's always a square, triangle, circle combo in order to... And as you can see right there, the pool came up just as I got control of him. So I, I kind of cut it close. But here's a Beast Tamer. And what he's going to do is he's going to try and kick me off. If he tries to kick you off, all you have to do is just repeatedly mash circle. Just mash circle. And here, this is a scripted event. He was meant to kick me off. It, he was doing that to show that uh, you can lose your position. And it's uh, this time it's of no consequence. We just have to fight him again. And that's really it. Later on, you're going to see uh, certain situations arise where if we get kicked off, we are deeply screwed. So... We have to, this was just teaching us that Beast Tamers can actually come along and kick us off of our, uh, kick us off of the Asterian Beast, and just like we're kicking this guy off right here. So, now that we've taken control of our Asterian Beast once again, let's go over here and deal with these guys. We got some more Throne Demons. So, this is another, uh, this is a good example of a situation uh, where I can pretty much, if I get kicked off here, like right here, I'm gonna have to fight all these guys and an Asterian Beast, as just as Dante. So here I can kick, I can fight, I can fight them off. The Beast Tamers are what are in this situation. They're what I would prioritize. I would prioritize killing the Beast Tamers over the Throne Demons, just simply because the Throne Demons really don't do anything. It'll take them a long time to actually damage your Asterian Beast. The beast tamers can kick you off the beast, kick you off the Asterian beast, and they're the ones who can really make life difficult for you. So I strongly recommend that you prioritize the beast tamers first. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice we're back in the chamber of Plutus. We want to go further, further left across the wall. As you can see, there's the wall that I can climb on to the left and right of Plutus. However. Plutus is, himself is in the way, the statue of Plutus. So what we have to do is we have to find a way to get Plutus out of the way. So here we're going to fight more throne demons as well as a beast tamer. And as you can see, I'm ignoring the, the throne demons. And I'm going to prioritize this beast tamer and kill him. Because, you know, as I said, if he kicks me off, I have to not only fight him on an Asterian beast, but I have to fight all the throne demons as well, just as Dante. Which is definitely not what I want to do. You know, an Asterian Beast, it may be slow, but it is a powerhouse, and it is, it is a power point that you don't want to give up. It's, you know, this position is definitely not something you want to lose in these types of fights. So right here we have more uh, enemies that are just going to try and uh, harass us. These are just regular min greed minions. 
Nothing too special, nothing too outrageous. And over here, Plutus is showing us the next key we need to use. Now, right off the bat, you don't know what to do with it, uh, but we know that we need to climb the wall. As you can see, we can climb the wall up to the left as the Asterian Beast. So what we need to do is we need to obviously move this block and put it somewhere. And this part can actually be pretty confusing, but I was lucky enough to figure it out. I saw the gold square over here, and I'm just like, I thought putting it in the circle is that. I'm like, wait a second, hold on, let me try on that gold square. Because this is square shaped, that square, the thing is square shaped. Let's try shoving it over here before it disintegrates. And I'm like, okay, good. Plutus is lowering. I gotta move quickly. I just hope that the block does not disintegrate uh, before I can get over there. So at this point, we're heading back to the Wheel of Fortune with the Asterian Beast. So let's go all the way around here. And we're gonna take pretty much the same path. It's just a slightly different means. Here's the rope we swung across. And at the other end of the rope is another section, and if you look closely, you'll actually see Virgil chilling right down there at the other end of the rope. There he is. He doesn't have anything to say for us this time. But anyway, let's go over here. Let's head over to the Wheel of Fortune and have an encounter with someone important from Dante's life. Well, actually, I lied. I'm sorry about that. First, we have to fight off a bunch of more demons. We're going to have to fight off some more throne demons and some more beast tamers as well. So, and then we'll have the cutscene. And then we'll have a cutscene showing uh, who's da who Dante's going to be facing. I'm pretty sure you already know. We already saw him earlier. But here we're going to actually uh, have a little confrontation with him. A little verbal standoff before the fight actually begins. So, just go ahead and deal with these guys just as you would with any enemies while riding a beast. And here this guy grabs the leg as I'm about to do my stomp. So let's just go ahead and just keep mashing circle. Like I said, getting kicked off here is definitely... You're pretty you're pretty much screwed. You know, fighting an Asterian Beast while fighting a bunch of throne demons. You're, you're asking for it. You're in deep trouble. Unless you want to burn through a bunch of magic. And your uh, redemption meter. Which I don't want to do because we're, we're going to save those for the boss fight. So it is in your best interest to deal with all these guys with just the Asterian Beast. And you're going to have to anyway, because you need the beast in order to move on. So you're going to have to take back the Asterian Beast anyway, so it's better not to, to just not give it up. Alright, so, we're almost done with these guys. we got a few more enemies to deal with, and then this guy sneaks up behind me because he was off screen, a sneaky bastard. But we're going to kick him off, and then we're just going to deal with him with a little brutality. I think I am too much the same man as my father. Then turn back, coward! Beatrice does not deserve this. I will not go back without her. Then we'll find out who's the better man. Right, so after the little verbal confrontation between Dante and his father, now we can go topple the Wheel of Fortune. We're going to knock it down, and this is actually going to be the fighting stage for our boss battle. I don't know what happens to the Asterian Beast, but whatever. Let's go ahead and start the boss battle. Okay, so right off the bat, he pretty much has uh, one basic attack. He'll constantly try and hit you with the cross in his hand. I don't know if that is, if you can block it. I don't know if it is an unblockable attack. I just try to evade. So, for the most part, this first part of the fight is pretty simple. You just rush in, attack, evade, when it, you know, and that's all it is. Be careful uh, not to fall into the pool of gold outside. He can actually knock you into it. So, it's definitely not fun. Um, so, you just got to keep up the pressure. Keep up right here. Your hits do very little damage, but for the most part, you just got to keep up. You just got to be patient with this fight. Right here, I'm going to activate Redemption. It's not going to be extremely effective, but it does take his health down reasonably quicker. So right here, he's been staggered, he's been stunned, and let's wail into him. So now he's going to upgrade his uh, arsenal. 
Those crosses he plants in the ground emit little shock waves every few, every like two seconds. Those shock waves are very great at distracting, at not distracting, they're interrupting you. They damage you and they interrupt you. They don't last for too long, they last for about 10-15 seconds on the ground. This, however, is extremely annoying. He'll throw a cross in the air and it'll repeatedly attack you. And in combination with his the cross that he plants in the ground and his regular attacks, just in combination with all that, all these little weak little damage things add up. And as you can see, I'm already at under half health because of everything. He doesn't do much damage with each individual attack, but it's all of his attacks combined that do, uh, do significant damage. So right here, we're just gonna go ahead and if you dodge that little that fr that cross that he throws, if you dodge it, uh, it can actually uh, it'll disappear. But if it hits you once, it'll repeatedly try and attack you, so you can just block to try and get rid of it. So we've got him down to about a third of his health. So right here, we just have to pretty much just keep up the pressure, and it's actually going to. I'm not gonna fare too well again in this fight. I'm, I'm not going to spoil what ha you know how the end result is, but let's just say it's not pretty. So I try to use Lust right here, or the Lust Storm, and it does a decent job of constantly damaging him. But he's, his con his repeated attacks are what you know these things. His ground, is, you know, it just keeps interrupting me, and it gets in the way. And then his cross swings, you know, they knock me away. And if you notice, the platform is actually getting smaller and smaller. Each time you stun him and knock him down. You actually uh, don't. Uh, yeah, the area gets smaller, and right here he kills me. So we're gonna try that again. However, I'm gonna speed up the first few parts of this fight. So right now we're moving at 1.5 times speed. So that's uh, what you're seeing and hearing. So it's pretty much the same fight. Uh, you know, the first two sections of the same fight. He'll use the same attacks. One trick I learned is don't dodge away from him. When he does at the when he does these uh, me melee attacks, dodge to the other side of him. It'll put you slightly closer, and he's so fat that you'll actually be close enough to hit him anyway after one or two swings. So, like I said, dodging from to the left or to the right of him, you know, get behind him and flank him. That's your best bet. So right here, I'm using Redemption. I'm gonna try and use Lust Storm again, and I'm gonna gain some distance. And you know. I just don't I just don't like that stupid ground thing he does. So and he, this also like I said these two attacks are really annoying but luckily I can block the cross that repeatedly attacks me. So for the most part this fight is going to be pretty similar. Uh, there's not going to be any too uh, much of a variety. Towards the end of the fight though, he'll demonstrate one tactic uh, that we didn't see the first time around. And I'm gonna discover, and this is the fight where I really discover the value of Dante's cross. You know, the Holy Cross attacks that he does. This is where I really discover just how useful it is. So, right here, you know, just gotta be patient, you know. Don't rush in there. And, you know, because you know, rushing is definitely a problem for me in this fight. Like I said, I mentioned in an earlier video, I like to be aggressive and fight aggressively. This fight, this boss fight was actually kind of stressful for me in terms of I couldn't fight the way I wanted to. And right there, I was, I was like, I was like, you know, I paused and I was like, damn it, man. And I was like thinking maybe I could buy some health. But right here, I got enough health to push on. And now the fight is back to normal speed. So we're gonna wrap this fight up right here. Here's where I just, here's where the cross actually comes in handy, and here's where his to ta here's where his attacks will vary. When I'll gain some distance and I'll use the cross, and then he does this. He'll throw repeated small, you know, like four of them out in one direction, and then they'll come back. The thing is, though, I'm just using the uh, original strategy of. When I dodge, I don't dodge away from him, I just dodge to the other side of him. And in doing so, I, I'm safe completely from all of his crosses. They never even come close to hitting me. So let's finish him off. Go on! Use me as an excuse! Blame me for everything! You're so full of greed and hate. Is that all you had to offer me? I'm not responsible for the man you are. 
And I will not be damned like you. <laughs> Now we obtain the Sins of the Father magic. This is essentially the cross that would repeatedly attack Dante. Now we have it and it'll attack en other enemies. It's not the best in my opinion. And now we've got the Eye of Ag Agliero, or however you pronounce his name, you know, Dante's father's name. So, we're actually going to end the video uh, right here. First, we're going to get some health, some much needed health. And up top is a relic. And I'm going to actually have a look at the relic menu first before I end the video. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to uh, pretty much just upgrade myself before I saved. So, as you can see, the Arrow of Paris is fully maxed out. It's full, you know, it's at max level 3, and we can't really do anything with it. So, we're going to have a look around. The Coins of Plutus, you know, allow Dante's style points, you know. They do something like that. Uh, let's see, Dante is able to... Uh, the Eye of Agliero, Dante absorbs a certain amount of damage, and the Hoarder's Purse increases the time window for counterattacks. So, the Hoarder's Purse is not all that great. The Eye of Agliero, it's it's alright. The Crown of Carthage, Dante's protected from, you know, certain attacks. Let's see. You know, so it's like, right now, only a few relics are actually very, very good. And a couple of them I can't even equip, like the Tale of Minos. I, you know, I can't even use that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to unequip the arrow and I'm going to use Anthony's standard. Anthony's standard. And then we're going to go ahead and save our game right here. And I will see you all in the next video and we are finally done with greed. This is Rad Tech Shoe signing off.